For today's species profile, we are traveling to the forests of Asia, specifically focusing on the Himalayas and south to Myanmar, as this is where we can find our next species, the red panda. Red pandas are some of the cutest creatures to ever walk the earth, but for a very long time it was unclear what they actually are. At one point in time it was believed they were bears, due to their similarities with the giant panda. Whilst both species are bamboo eaters and have false thumbs, these two pandas are not closely related. This type of evolution is called convergent evolution and is where two species develop the same characteristics separate from each other which is potentially one of the coolest parts about animal evolution. Another potential cousin of the red panda is the raccoons, and the connection was first made due to the resemblances in their markings. However, this relationship has now been supported by fossil evidence, but is far too distant for the red panda to be considered a raccoon, as it's believed they split from the raccoon family between 40 and 60 million years ago. This led scientists to conclude the red panda was part of its own family, which was named Alluridae after the scientific name Alluris fulgens. It is believed the earliest Aelurids originated in Europe, either in the late Oligocene or the early Miocene, which is between 18 and 25 million years ago. Then later on during the Miocene, the first true red panda evolved in what is now Spain. Since then, two species of red panda diverged from one another 250,000 years ago. Many scientists still categorise the red panda as a single species, as the evidence for the two red panda species was not available until 2020. The first red panda species is known as the Himalayan red panda, whilst the second may be known by one of two names, either it is referred to as the Steins red panda, or in some sources it may be referred to as the Chinese red panda. The first description of the red panda in science was written in 1821. The author of this description was Major General Thomas Hardwick, and Hardwick presented his paper to the Linnaean Society for publishing. However, somewhat unfortunately for him, his paper wouldn't be published until six years later, and consequently he would not be credited as the original describer. That title goes to a man named Cuvier, who published his description in 1825, just two years before Hardwick's description would be printed. It was Cuvier that gave the red panda the scientific name Lyris fulgens, which translates roughly to fired coloured cat. Many people consider the giant panda to be the original panda, but it wouldn't be until 48 years later that the giant panda would be discovered and named, and this was because of its similarities to the much smaller red panda. The origin of the panda name is unclear, but one theory is it derived from the local name for the animal, which was Nigella ponya, which translates roughly to bamboo-footed. Red pandas may also be called a variety of different things, just in the English language as the animal is known as the lesser panda, the red cat's bear, the fire fox, the fox bear and the Himalayan raccoon. More recently, molecular studies of the red pandas have uncovered that they may have a relationship with mustelids. This family includes animals such as weasels and otters, and the study also suggests there may be a link between the red panda and skunks. Red panda is incredibly well adapted to their life in the trees, as not only are their claws retractable, but they can also turn their ankles 180 degrees, which allows them to descend head first down tree trunks. Their bushy tail also helps them with their arboreal lifestyle, as it helps them balance whilst walking along tree branches. Their tail also serves another purpose, as it can be used to help them keep warm in winter, Another adaptation to keep the red panda warm in such harsh weather and whilst eating such a low energy diet is the fact they can reduce their metabolic rate. This is just the process of all the different chemical reactions in their body, but they could do this without decreasing their core body temperature. You may also be surprised to hear that red pandas are speedy little animals, as they can run at speeds of 38 kilometers per hour, which is around 24 miles per hour. That may not seem like a lot at first, but considering that an adult human can only run at a top speed of around 15 miles per hour, that's one fast panda. Compared to the other panda, red pandas are also quite small, being similar in size to your average house cat and weighing only around 4 kilograms. The red pandas have a small middle ear cavity, which might suggest that they cannot hear quite as well as some other animals, but they do have an excellent sense of smell which they don't detect in the usual way. You and I might detect scent using our noses, but the red pandas can also detect scent using their tongues, which is a very reptilian feature for a mammal. The reason the pandas have such a good sense of smell 
could be because they have stink glands all over their bodies, including on their pore pads, which secrete a colourless and odourless fluid, as well as having anal glands, which secrete a dark and pungent fluid. But it isn't yet known why the red pandas use the scent glands on their feet, as they have no scent and there's no colour to them, so scientists still have to figure out this mystery about the red panda. Despite not being related to the giant panda, there is one similarity between the pandas, and that is they both have an enlarged wrist bone, which could be used as a false thumb to grab onto the leaves and stalks of bamboo. The red pandas also have a unique digestive system, which really links them to their carnivorous cousins, as the red panda, despite having a diet made up of mostly bamboo, doesn't have the necessary microbes in their gut to break down plant material. The gut is also quite short, which is usually something only seen in carnivorous animals. They also only have a single chambered stomach, and once again, this is unusual in herbivores, which usually have stomachs made up of multiple chambers, which aid the digestion of fibrous plant material. This shows that, on an evolutionary scale anyways, that the red panda has not been a herbivore for long, as the only thing adapted to their bamboo diet are their molars, which have an elaborate crown pattern which helps them chew the bamboo, and much like other omnivorous carnivores, their chewing muscles and salivary glands are enlarged. Since the confirmation that there are two species of red panda, scientists have found that the Stein's red panda is in general larger and more brightly coloured than the Himalayan species. It also has a slightly larger skull and more robust teeth. The red pandas come from the temperate forests of Asia, in countries such as Bhutan, China, India, Myanmar and Nepal. The two species are believed to have slightly separate home ranges, with the Himalayan red pandas being found further north and the Stein's red panda being found all the way south down to Myanmar. Even though the Stein's red panda was only confirmed to be distinct in 2020, the first mention of the species was in 1902, when Oldfield Thomas named the species after F.W. Stein, who was the man who collected the specimen he was reviewing. In these forests, the red pandas also have an altitude preference, most of the time being found between 2,400 and 3,900 metres. But in certain regions, such as Meghalaya, the pandas seem to favour lower altitudes of between 700 and 1,400 metres. So taking all of this into account, how much of this habitat are the red pandas using? Well, recent studies suggest that only half of the potential habitat that could house red pandas is in use. Red pandas also need to share this habitat with other species. This includes grey langurs, Himalayan black bears, yellow-throated martins, leopards, Himalayan goral, and in some regions, giant pandas. And as you will hear about in the conservation part of this video, some of these species have a negative effect on the red panda populations. Despite being classified under the carnivore order, and as you may know, the red panda's diet is made up of mainly bamboo. Around 95% of the diet, in fact, is just bamboo. For a 4, 5 or even 6 kilogram animal, that could mean the red panda is eating around 20,000 bamboo leaves every single day. But they don't just eat bamboo, as there is that other 5%. This other 5% can be made up of a variety of things, including grasses, acorns and berries. But it may also include a little bit of meat, as red pandas have been known to eat grubs, lizards, mice, chicks and bird's eggs. Apart from the red panda, there are actually only three other types of animal that are adapted to eating just bamboo as the bulk of their diet. These are the giant panda, the bamboo lemurs, and the bamboo rats. And like many of these bamboo eaters, the red pandas are incredibly picky over what bamboo they are actually eating. A red panda may have up to 40 species of bamboo in their habitat, of which only one or two will be good enough for them to eat. The reason that they only eat one or two species is because these are the species that contain the most nutrition, with the highest levels of protein and fibre. Even by eating the most nutritious species of bamboo, it still isn't the most nourishing of diets. This is because only around a quarter of the leaves and a half of the shoots the red panda eats are digested. Due to not being able to break down a lot of food they are eating, a red panda needs to forage for 10 to 12 hours per day. Proximity to water is an incredibly important requirement for red panda habitats, and in one park this was proven as around 90% of panda poo was found within 100 metres of a water source. The reason that water is so important for the pandas is because they actually poo out more water than they get from their bamboo diet, so they need to drink at least once per day. 
One thing that red pandas aren't picky about is when they're awake. Red pandas are active around 50% of the time, but this could be during the day or at night with the highest levels of activity seen during the summer months. Their activity levels also vary throughout the year depending on temperature and feeding opportunities as the red panda will switch between eating and sleeping. Periods of sleep in winter could last up to two hours, but this is usually the maximum amount of time the red pandas will be asleep for. The pandas will generally live solitary lives, but at times they can be found in pairs or in family groups which are referred to as sleuths. However, during the breeding season you may come across small groups that have come together, and this is a time when aggressive behaviours are most likely. You may wonder what an angry panda looks like. Well, usually their behaviour consists of the panda arching its back and tail and slowly raising and lowering their head, whilst emitting a low intensity puffing sound. If this doesn't work to threaten away their opponent, the pandas will then stand up on their hind legs and bat each other with their paws, which is kind of their go-to attack if you've seen any videos and then being surprised by rocks or other objects. Whilst red pandas can be aggressive at times, there are also situations in which they enjoy play. This is usually between cubs or breeding pairs and usually includes lunging and play fighting. There are actually very few studies around the home ranges of the red pandas, but what we do know is that our home range is extremely variable and can be anywhere between 1 square kilometre to 10 square kilometres, and a lot of the time the home ranges of neighbouring individuals overlap. Like many animals, the red pandas do need to define these territories, and red pandas use scent marking. They will use two methods of scent marking, either scenting actively using urine or secretions from their anal gland, or they will use a second method which is a little more passive. As the red pandas walk around, secretions from the soles of their feet mark whatever they are walking on, and when a red panda comes across these markings, they will thoroughly sniff and lick them to make sure they know exactly who's been around. Licking the scent allows them to get a much more thorough inspection of the scent, as pandas have enlarged papillae or projections on the underside of their tongue tip. Once those have been completed on red panda communication, scientists have come across seven distinct calls. These are whistles, quack snorts, twitters, squeals, bleats, exhales and snorts. Whistles were found to be used by cubs under three months of age as a distress call. Quack snorts were used as a discrete burst of sound, usually at a low frequency, that was made during aggressive encounters where the panda throws one or both front paws into the air. Squeals were high frequency calls made when under attack. Twitters were high frequency calls made during the breeding season and bleats were low frequency repeated syllables also made during the breeding season. And finally, snorts were sudden explosive exhalations of breath produced when the panda comes across another animal. You may be wondering that if a red panda can sometimes be seen in family groups where there is no aggression, yet at other times be found in groups where aggression between individuals can be seen, how do they know who's who? Well, for that we need to look at a red panda's face, as the patterns on their forehead and around the eyes are believed to be unique to each individual, and allow the red pandas to recognise each other. So in the wild, red pandas will first start to think about breeding around January, and the season usually extends into March. However, pandas that are kept in captivity in the Southern Hemisphere will typically begin to breed later in the year, so around June to August. This is because the female's desire to breed is stimulated by the increase in day length, so that her cubs are born in summer when there is more resources available to her. Red pandas are not particularly loyal partners, and despite usually being kept in breeding pairs in captivity, wild red pandas will breed with multiple members of the opposite sex. They do, however, have a courtship period, as the pair will stay together for a day or so before breeding and courtship may last for several hours. A lot of the female's time during the breeding season will be spent scent marking within her home range, and this is what the male marks on top of to communicate with her. Red panda pregnancy typically lasts 135 days, but there's an incredible amount of variation between the times of her getting pregnant and her actually having her cubs. This suggests the red pandas may be able to delay the implantation of the embryo until they're just more favourable conditions. That said, around six weeks before the female gives birth, she'll begin to become a little lethargic, and then just a few days before the birth, she'll begin to build the nest the cubs will stay in for the next few months. In the wild, the nest will usually be made in tree hollows or in a rock crevice. Obviously, in captivity, they don't have access to a selection of trees and rocks to find the perfect nesting place. So instead, we create nest boxes for her. She will usually have her cubs anywhere from the late afternoon until the early morning, and after having her litter, which can number anywhere between one and five cubs, with the average just being one or two, she'll spend up to 90% of her time with her new cubs as she needs to stimulate them to go to the toilet, and she'll usually eat whatever they produce. That is one dedicated mother. 
She will also move her cubs several times a day, carrying them in her mouth to preferable spots within the nest. At birth, the cubs will only weigh around 120 grams, be entirely covered in woolly grey hair and completely dependent on their mother. They will also continue to be reliant on her until they are 8 months old, at which point they will become independent but may remain near her until she breeds again. The cubs will usually nurse for around 17 minutes at a time and they won't begin to eat solid food until they are 50 days old. By this time they will also have their full adult coloration, despite their red fur beginning to show through at just 2 weeks old. At first, the mother will bring back bamboo twigs and chewed leaves to the nest for the cubs to try, as they won't leave the nest themselves until they are around 17 days old. It won't be until they are around 3 months old that the cubs will begin to regularly eat solid food, and it may be 22 weeks before the cubs are fully weaned. After becoming independent, the cubs won't fully mature themselves until they are at least a year and a half old, and start the circle of life all over again. Red pandas are popular animals in zoos worldwide, and they have remained popular since the first red panda arrived at London Zoo in the UK in the May of 1869. It wouldn't be until 70 years later that the first red pandas would arrive in North America, when four animals were brought back from Nepal. This group would be incredibly successful in captivity, producing many litters and starting a captive bred red panda population in America, but it wouldn't be until 1977, three decades later, the International Stud Book would be created and it wouldn't be until the mid-1980s that 30 zoos would come together to start the international breeding programme for the species. When we keep any animal in captivity, we need to make sure that its needs are met, as well as going above and beyond to provide the best care and welfare standards for the animal. The red panda is no exception to this rule, and there are multiple requirements zoos must provide for the red pandas to live happy and healthy lives in managed care. The first point we must consider when keeping red pandas in zoos is their ideal social grouping. In the wild they live alone and only come together for the breeding season, but in captivity the red pandas will happily live in a breeding pair that stays together all year round. That is until the female falls pregnant. At this point the female will need to be separated to allow her and her cubs to have a private space away from the father. Despite living mostly arboreal lives, a discovery by Australian zoos where temperatures skyrocket to levels which the red panda would find it very difficult to adapt to has shown that the most successful red panda breedings occur when the red pandas are offered underground nesting areas. Because of the red panda's secretive nature, they don't have a massive impact economically or culturally on the Asian people, but they do still have an impact, with the earliest reference to the species being in a 13th century scroll from the Chow dynasty. Since then, the red panda has played a key role in some traditions, such as the tradition for the fur of the red panda to be considered good luck and made into hats for bridegrooms to wear. However, not all cultural beliefs around the red panda have a negative impact on the species, as some beliefs, such as the belief that seeing a red panda when travelling is a good omen, and the belief in Bhutan that the red pandas are actually the reincarnations of Buddhist monks. Sadly, the red pandas are an endangered species with them being under threat from habitat degradation and poaching. It is thought there could be less than 10,000 left in the wild, a decline of 50% over just 18 years. But exact estimates are difficult, as the red pandas are such shy animals. However, recent genetic studies have shown that the diversity within the Himalayan species is extremely low, and this has been noted as a concern for the species' future. Like many other species, the red pandas are also at risk from climate change, this is a big issue you will have heard of a lot about over the recent years, but sometimes it doesn't quite hit home until you realise that this species is directly being affected by it. The red panda's home is on fire. Unusual weather patterns and drought mean it's difficult for the red pandas to find enough water just to survive. But we can aim to protect these species, to safeguard them for the next generations, and the generations after them. There are laws preventing the trade of the red pandas, but we really need to put more resources on the ground so the local people can enforce these laws. Or we need to provide incentives so they don't see a dead red panda as something of monetary value, and see the value in the animal whilst it's alive and free to roam in the wild forests of Asia, where it belongs and we all want them to be. If you want to donate to the cause of the red panda, I'll put a link in the description to the Red Panda Network, which is doing brilliant work towards saving the red pandas. Time for some bonus facts. These are facts that didn't quite fit well into the rest of the video, but I still thought they were important to include. Bonus fact one is a female red panda is known as a sow and a male is known as a boar. The second bonus fact, the average lifespan for a red panda in the wild is eight years old, but usually in captivity, you would expect a healthy red panda to go on to live around nine years at least, as a record for the oldest captive red panda was a staggering 21 years old.
Thank you so much for watching this species profile. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Next time we'll be looking at the red-eyed tree frog. So subscribe and turn on that notification bell if you want to be notified when the next profile is uploaded.